Hey, it's Monday night and time for voiceover body shop. Uh, Dan Leonard here. George is in. Way out in Colorado. All right. Out in where it's snowing and stuff. We are going to geek out tonight because we've got as a great guest, the one and only Mike Delgadio, the booth junkie. And, uh, boy, this is going to be really interesting. As somebody else who knows a lot about voiceover equipment. And uh, we have a couple of questions and some bleary-eyed stuff from VO Atlanta, which I think George and I are both bleary-eyed from. Anyway, it's all coming up <laughs> exactly. right now on VoiceOver Body Shop. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now, VO2Gogo.com, everything you need to become a successful voice artist. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. The VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And by VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hey, good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS. BS. Hey, there he is up there in Colorado. How's it, hey, everybody. How's it going up there, out there today? Up in the, up at a thousand feet or 5,000 feet or more. Yeah, we are over a mile high here in Boulder. Um, I'm here at Maxine's house, and it is a blustery, super chilly and really windy time right now. I mean, the winds that get up here are borderline scary, making <laughs> the approach into DIA a little bit more exciting. The flight last night was really good until you got into that last you know, 100 miles or so. It got bumpy. And uh, the Southwest pilot, man, man, those guys are good. That plane, you couldn't even tell when the wheels hit the ground. It was really amazing. Yeah. Well, if he's in all that turbulence, he's like, so, you know, an easy landing. It's just pull it back and stuff. Anyway, tonight on our show, Mike Delgadio is joining us. Uh, maybe you're familiar with his videos, uh, Booth Junkie. This guy has everything, everything you could possibly ever need for a home voiceover studio or some really nice studios. Um, and, uh, they're, they're really cool little videos that he does and he has a lot of them and he's got his own YouTube channel. So we'll be talking with him in a little bit. Maybe we'll let him sneak in on some of our tech questions in a little bit. And, uh, but we're going to also talk about VO Atlanta because, well, gee, we were only there like the past three and a half days. It's not like nothing happened, although you were sequestered away there in that, that booth. Yeah, I'll talk about that. I talk about that in the video. Okay, so cool. We'll get yeah. into that. Very good. All right. Well, with all that taken care of, it's now time for Voice Over Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. Time for the voiceover extra news. Sleep. Well, this past weekend's voiceover Atlanta conference is another one for the VO history books. With over 650 attendees 
and four days of learning, networking, and partying. It was indeed a blast. And if you were there, our question for you tonight is, did you catch up on your sleep yet? Baggy eyes can be expected in the mornings at such a busy event. But now, back home, are your mind and throat rested for performing at your best? Well, you might have met the one and only Natasha Merchukwa at VO Atlanta. She is a VO pro who confesses that she needs eight and a half hours of sleep every night to feel and perform her best. And in an article now on VoiceOver Extra, Natasha gives us 10 tips, 10, for getting this required rest. Here's a highlight of her advice. Number one, your sleep routine. Go to bed at the same time every night, seven nights a week. Two, clear your mind with fresh air, exercise, and yoga. All right. Um, use, uh, let's see, keep a journal. Write out your thoughts to leave them on the page. All right. Four, use guided meditation. Five. Avoid sugar and caffeine before bed. Six, do not drink alcohol before bed. It's full of sugar and other things. Seven, get rid of light in your sleeping environment, LED and otherwise. Eight, keep the room temperature at cool to comfortable. Do not use electronics. That's number nine. Do not use electronics up to one hour before bed except if you've just been on the VOBS podcast and not playing words with friends. 10. And more about your sleep routine. Wake up at the same time every morning. Thank you, Natasha. Always great advice from her. We wish everyone a good night's sleep tonight. And tomorrow, be sure to read Natasha's full article and hundreds more at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. Well... <laughs> Have you recovered yet? Now you 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 only lost you only got back two hours, right? I got uh, I got a solid night's sleep last night, and you know we made up a lot of sleep, and it's just a two hour difference in time, not a big problem. Um, so you know there was a lot to do at that event, and so many activities. It was just just an amazing time. But yeah. to me, the most important thing was the ability to pull off some pretty important recording sessions. That was my job at the event. I was running a studio for Source Elements, and uh, this video clip we have, I get to talk a little bit about it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at it. Roll it. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So what went on in the studio? You said you had some interesting stories of recording people uh, yeah, at the conference. Yeah. It's cool because I am I am a little bit sequestered away. It's a it's a room that's purposely chosen to be as far away from everything else as possible, and um, they picked a room that's a little bit of a challenge in itself because it's it's a room that's in the center aisle. Mm -hmm. So we have double doors flanking the room either side. Not the greatest situation. It took us a little while to figure out how to lock it down, make it you know we put signs up all over the place, <laughs> be quiet, which you know how well that works. Um, but even with that, with, we're using these vocal booth to go soundproofer booths, which they feel like when you pull the flap open to go inside, it feels like you're going to put on an X-ray lead, a lead, the lead thing you wear in the X-rays, it and it's real heavy. <laughs> yeah. And the uh, one guy said it feels like a flak jacket, you know, from the military. <laughs> it's very heavy. It's made out of mass loaded vinyl, yeah. and it does a darn good job like really surprisingly well. And then that with a little bit of special sauce on the processing I'm doing, just a little bit of seasoning on the expander, um, it does a good job. And you know, I, I can't not mention the session I did for Maxine Dunn because that was, a, that ironically was the star of the, of the day yesterday. It was an hour and 10 minutes, Source Connect, um, new client. So you know, we really wanted it to go well. Um, she was supposed to be in Denver, couldn't be. So the studio in Denver allowed us to remote in. So there were a lot of little things that made it kind of a special session. That's, that's one of those things where the old saying, if you want voice work, book a flight. Holy cow. I'm telling you for Maxine, that has never been more the case. You know what we're going to do every month? Make a just plane, plane send an email to your agent saying <laughs> I'm, I'm out, out of, of town. town. Yeah. Cause that's going to get you more work. I'm telling you. She's over. She's jealous. She's off camera, but it um, it went exceedingly well. It really did. I mean, I was 
Maxine's just a total pro. It was one of those sessions where it's a 30 second spot, but the client has to get approval. That client wasn't physically in the studio. The producers were, is that right, uh, Maxine? So the producers were giving all the direction and everything, and then they would say, okay, let's lay it in. Then you'd hear it with the music. And then they would say, okay, we like that. Now we need to get approval. They'd send it to, I guess, MP3. I don't know what. And it was just, it took a lot of patience, you know, especially mm -hmm. on her part. And she stood in that booth for, she didn't, she is such a pro. She doesn't move her feet from where she's standing for that whole session hmm. because she wants to be sure she's always on mic in the right spot. In those shoes? And those <laughs> shoes. That's not, that is, that's discipline. I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, but yeah, we pulled it off, and Source Connect was was we did the job. And then we had we even had Telos Zephyr down there using that VISDN system, mm -hmm. which we've had at the ready, but there's been no call for it. Hmm. ISDN studios aren't using it the way they used to. You know, it only happened. It, you know, we predicted what six, 20, seven years ago that it would be gone in two years. Yeah, we figured 2010. 2020 was when AT and C T says we're pulling the plug. Right. So who knows? We're all kind of getting ready for that, but there's been no call for it. But th we've done phone patches, self-directs, auditions, everything from telephony stuff to uh, Rebecca Davis just did some stuff for an anim for a, um, a video game. Mm -hmm. You know, she was cackling and laughing, and well, she's always like that. But you know, it's... <laughs> right. we did it all in that in that studio. So it's been it's been exciting to pull off that stuff, and for me to be the engineer. I never get to do that stuff anymore. No. I'm always the tech, so it's 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 been interesting and fun. You're always the guy crawling behind everybody's desk. <laughs> no. and, uh, yeah, it's, it's been nice to just chill. And it's always fun to do that. Take one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We also wanted to demonstrate the acoustics in here. Oh yeah, the acoustics in this room are rather yeah. well. They are what yeah. they are. Here, it's let's, a, let's do a test here. Okay. Let's, we clap our hands. Holy crap, are you guys hearing that? We're getting this crazy ping pong because we have parallel drywall hard surfaces on either side and it's boing. You get this crazy slap back. Like a room like this, all they would have to do is scatter some panels on yeah, one a wall. A couple of gobos, be, yeah, that'd be great. Be great. The drapery over drapery, here. If the drapes were closed, the drapes that would probably help. helping yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah. But we always we get a kick out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we do is we go and we sniff around and we're like, what's going on in this room? And we don't yeah. use big complex calculations. I'm sure sometimes if you send something to Oralex or they'll they'll do these big calculations and it's like yeah, there's online no, it's like, calculators. Yeah, the only thing you got to use is your ear. Mm -hmm. It's pretty usually pretty simple. This is where the mic is. My ear is at the same place. You're going to hear what it's hearing, only it's hearing more because mm -hmm. it's not filtering out all the things that our brain filters mm -hmm. out. So mm -hmm. anyway, true. There's, there's been a couple of great panels. I haven't attended any of the X sessions. Right. Uh, you know, they, you know, those, are the, those are the paid sessions that are, are above and beyond the expense of the actual conference. conference right. And uh, but I've been to a couple of panels. There was a great panel yesterday that J. Michael Collins, one of our fine sponsors, uh, did on online casting, and it was outstanding. It really was, and it and it brought up the subject that everybody's talking about. That uh, you know, is there room in the marketplace for competition for other casting sites? And Matt mm. Dubois, who's been on our show from Voice Casting Hub, uh, you know, great entrepreneur, he jumped right in and did it. And and fine and Paul Strickford. Uh, He's not here, is he? Matt yeah, Dubois. Yeah, yeah. He was oh, here. he is here. He was here. Oh, cool. Yeah, he was here yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, that thing's really hit the ground running, hasn't it? It. I'm suddenly isn't getting that access. Isn't that what all the major acts? Isn't that what the the major agents picked up on? They, they all picked up on it. Not yeah. all of them, but many not of all them. But many. And uh, enough to have some momentum. Well, I'm getting Let's auditions that I never had access to before from the, on Voice Bank. I wasn't that small cadre of people who were like. You know, in the corner, like, hey, hey, we're all by ourselves here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and now it's much more wide open, and the independent agents with the Agents Alliance are feeding stuff in there. And suddenly, there's there's a there's a network job that's coming over here, and there's you know other big stuff that's not you know fifty dollars or something like that. So the Boys guys you have called in the past, the lunch pail voice exactly. actors, right, are going to benefit, they, and they already are. So that's the the whole voice bank thing actually as I suspected at the time, was actually of great benefit to us. So we actually owe, you know, Voldemort 
uh, a uh, <laughs> you know, and some thanks for totally you know messing up the market. Sometimes when you have a disruption, situation, yeah. Sometimes you just got to play fifty-two card pickup, and and eventually everything you know. Or, or as Tony Robbins used to say, "Out of chaos comes order." Yeah. That's so, kind of what that's about. And 2017 that's, was a year of chaos. It definitely sure. is. Certainly the last six months of it was. Um, let's see. There was a there was a round rates round table I was just at that uh, that Wovo was running, which was very interesting. Uh, Brad Newman told a story about how he had a uh, an agent who was still doing business with Voice Bank, and he said, you, I'm not going to work with you if, if you're doing that. He didn't say, don't work with them. He says, I'm not going to work with you. And he fired them. Wow. Wow. And so, you know, I mean, hopefully they're getting the thing. The, the whole thing that everybody seems to be finally gelling around is this idea that people have to have the courage to talk to the people who pay their rent and pay their bills and buy their food, their clients. You know, it's a risky thing to do. But how do you do your casting? Are you working with Voices.com? Do you realize what they do? Yeah. And show them the evidence. There was a dossier put out the other day, some financials, and there's a lot of other, you know, very damning evidence about what they're doing. Hmm. But let them decide. Yeah. And and it's been very, very effective. It and seems, it's seems to have definitely I don't know if the word tainted the conversation at this conference, but it's definitely been the topic of a lot of conversations. Yeah. Well, they aren't here. Yeah. <laughs> because apparently a couple of years ago it was made quite clear by those attending that they were not very welcome. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, but that was interesting. But the best part of any conference is it. You know, I mean, the, the, all of the the, you know, the, the discussions and the, uh, the presentations are great, but nothing beats having lunch with some old friends, and people who you just want to sit down and talk with. Them. How you been? What's going on? People who who are leaders in the industry and you get to sit down and talk with them mm, and they're, yeah. they're interested in what you're doing. And, uh, it's just fun. But of course, and then, and then just meeting people and like, well, you're a unique, unique individual. I'd like to know more about you. And, uh, you know, how can we help each other? And that's what these conferences are really all about. But this is a big one. There's 670 people. Here. Yeah. And, uh, so congratulations to Gerald for, uh, for really putting together a, a really fine, uh, thing here. Yeah. Speaking of people we had lunch with, Gerald and Ron Minitria. Really? They were sitting yeah. right across from us. So we had a rare moment to kind of chat with them a little bit. And yeah. We thanked Gerald for having that booth set up there yeah. uh, because it was crucial. Thank you for nice. Yeah. Meow, snails like it too. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> you Learn the latest in voiceover technology. This hey, is 2018 going to be the year you take your voiceover practice to the next level? If not, you can go back to checking your email and all the stuff on Instagram and stuff while this message is airing. And I think there's also a little bit of leftover pizza in the fridge back there. But if you're serious about dramatically upping your level of success, I want you to go to a very special URL. That's a website. VO, the number two, gogo.com forward slash VOBS. That's VO2gogo.com forward slash VOBS. Join the hundreds of voiceover professionals and practitioners around the world who have decided to do something positive and invest in themselves for this new year. Learn voiceover from the ground up or from wherever you are to where you want to be. VO2GoGo.com forward slash V-O-B-S. Hey, let's make 2018 your year. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. 
So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back on VoiceOver Body Shop. You know, the, the flight back, actually, from VO Atlanta was interesting. We had, there was nine of us. Yeah, nine. There was nine of us that were there, and we were, uh, it was me and Yenny Alvarez and her husband and Rebecca Davis and Heather Costa and uh, Sophia Cruz and Michelle Blanker and Diana Birdsall and myself. And uh, <laughs> so we were like from B20, B9 to B26, and the rest of them were like C37 on Southwest. So, so we go running into the back of the plane and we start throwing all these suitcases and jackets across these seats and people are walking by and going, so I (laughs) nicely done. Yeah. So So you actually, you actually did want to sit next to each other on a plane. We did. We we had, (laughs) we had nine of us together. There were were the three behind us and, you know, and I was in the, in the front row and then the, the other gals were on the other side. None of the other gals wanted to sit with me for whatever. They all wanted to gossip and talk. And, and, you know, and I was just sort of like sitting there looking out the window the whole time. And we were really I'm ra- thinking, yeah, go ahead. By then, haven't you had enough of each other? <laughs> well, it, that's the way it turned out. You know, we were really rowdy in the terminal. The second we got on the plane, you know, it, it was a long way. Anyway. Oh yeah. So, I anyway, slept on the plane. Yeah. I, I, I tried to, but anyway, uh, you know, we get lots of questions from our fans and why do they want to ask us questions? Because George and I, we, we know what we're talking about, right? We know some stuff, a thing or two, a one on one, a thing or two. What's we, that line? We know a thing or two because we, we, we make up a thing or two. I don't know. Oh, whatever. We know stuff right. and we'll help you. Oh, oh like, yeah. The farmer's commercial, you know, we, we, <laughs> we, 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 we know how to thing or two cause we've seen a thing or two. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, and, and you and I have seen a thing or three uh, when it comes to home studios. Anyway, um, you know, George and I do this for a living. We're home studio experts. And, you know, you can't do much better than George here because he's uh, he's been doing it a while. How would they get in touch with you and what can you offer them? Well, I am at uh, georgethetech.com or if you like short nerdy URLs, it's georgethe.tech. And I have all my services available to you there. You can book support calls. You can book on-site visits if you're in LA. Uh, You can book offline services. I call them virtual engineering services where you send me your audio and I send back the resulting whatever it is, being uh, from a sound check to building up processing presets to drawing an entire recording studio design, whatever it is. Lots of different ways to work with me. And uh, Dan also does some of this kind of stuff over at, where do you go, Dan? Uh, homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, and there you'll see everything that I can do for you, talk about how I can work with you. And I also have a, uh, I have a way for you to send me audio. Just click on the specimen collection cup at the uh, bottom of the homepage and uh, it takes you to a Dropbox. Send me some raw audio. There's some instructions exactly how to do that. So. Uh, and boy, do we love doing what we do. Nothing more fun than going into people's houses and going into their closets and stuff and seeing what they have there. Uh, equipment. Yes. Yeah. Equipment, equipment wise. That's right. Yeah. Anyway. Mm-hmm. So we got a couple of questions. You want to get this first one here? Uh, yeah, this one's from Mike McVicker, which is a new name to me. Very cool. Welcome, Mike. Um, he's very new to the voiceover world and just purchased the road NT one a kit package. That's a that's a mic that comes with a pop screen, a shock mount, maybe a mic cable. Um, what name and model for a preamp and interface do you recommend and why? The ands are in capital letters hmm. for emphasis. Yes. Um, so I, I think what he's talking about, and maybe I could be wrong, but when he says a preamp and interface, probably he's talking about an audio interface like a USB interface that's also the preamp right which it's pretty much the only kind that we talk about on this show um dan why don't you start with your usual recommendations and i'll give him my usual recommendations okay well i mean they're probably pretty much the same it depends on your budget and uh you know how many features you want with it you know if you're not good with features uh then don't go for stuff that has all the features but 
uh, right. from you know from the basic uh, to all you really need. Uh, Focusrite makes a series of uh, uh, preamp interfaces that are really good, and then they make some really really good ones. But we're usually recommending either the uh, Focusrite Scarlet Two Little I Two, the Scarlet Two I Two, or even because you only need one microphone to do voiceover. Uh, the iTrack Solo or the Focusrite Solo, I think they call it now. Which yeah, works. they have the iTrack Solo and the Scarlet Solo. Scarlet Similar Solo, products. right. And, and they work with iOS devices too, which is really nice. Uh, right. And then uh, I personally, right now, I'm using uh, a Yamaha AGO3 at Mr. Woodham's uh, recommendation, and I've had no problems with it. It just sounds sweet. And it has. It is of, really nice. Yeah, yeah. And they make they make one with two inputs called the AGO6. Um, but you know, yeah. If you want, that's a few more bells and whistles on that one. Yeah, but and and you, you get that if you know how to use those bells and whistles, um, mm-hmm. and you know, and I found some uses for it in live webcasting and stuff like that. Not necessarily specifically for voiceover, but maybe you know you have that capability. And then one I think we probably both agree on is the Audient ID4, uh, which is oh, yeah. really nice. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say the Audient ID4. It would be the I'd say the best sub two hundred dollar or about two hundred dollar mic preamp interface available. Period. It just in terms of build quality, sound quality, it just it nails it, and it doesn't. And again, no feature, no over the top amount of features. Doesn't even use a driver, at least on a Mac. It's just it's just plug and play, and I love that about that unit. Um, my other sub hundred dollar. Uh, unit of choice is the Steinberg UR12. Um, that's very similar to the Scarlet in terms of just a one mic preamp interface. Um, but the cool thing about the UR12 is it also has a loop back feature. And it's not on the box. I wish it was a push button that was really convenient. It's actually in a web drive. It's actually in a sound driver. So on, on, on uh, Mac, it's in the system preferences. There's actually a little sound drive window, window you pop it open check a box and you get loop back yeah, for just, playing just, back your yeah, just last like, take. Yeah. Just like the Yamaha AGO three and six too, which actually has right, a switch right. on it, which is kind of, yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not, if for someone that's new, these are really the things, these are the things we're going to recommend to you um, for, for, for road warriors, which you are not yet, you know, the mic port pro is a really fantastic ultra portable device. I just wouldn't recommend it as your daily driver. It's very small and very light. And it's, it's hard to just manage it because it just falls off the table. It's so small and light. So uh, these other units are, you'll probably have better results with. Yeah. Yeah. And of course there's the ultimate, which the, the Holy grail that a lot of people are gravitating to right now, which is the uh, Apollo uh, twin, which is made oh, by, yeah. by universal audio and uh, universal labs audio. Or is it? Yeah. Your- talk about yeah. features. Oh yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> You know, I, 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 I guess, you know, if you're, if you're an engineer and I mean, cause this is what they use in a lot of really good professional studios now, because it allows for multi-tracking and input, you know, inputting and taking out and queuing effects and all sorts of stuff. It really is a, a marvelous unit and it ain't cheap. No, they, they start at four ninety nine. They have a new one. It's called the, uh, arrow, the universal audio Apollo arrow. Um, it's, it's only Thunderbolt three. Yeah. And there aren't a lot of computers with Thunderbolt three. I, all the new MacBook, MacBook pro, not MacBook air, by the way. Um, the new IMAX and the MacBook. let me think the Mac pro those have uh, Thunderbolt. No, not even the Mac pro has Thunderbolt three. I beg your pardon. Wow. So it's the <laughs> only select ones. You have to like really it's do a, your it, research. It's a real niche little thing you want to use. It I, is. They must know is. something everybody else doesn't though about uh, the future of uh, Thunderbolt. But uh, you know that's yeah. That, they took a big chance. Yeah. You know they developed a product that requires it, and uh, it's you know they take they invested in a lot of mo- they put a lot of money obviously investing in it and hoping that that Thunderbolt three technology uh just becomes commonplace so yeah those are some of the like ones that we like and i don't know if uh mike is patiently sitting and listening and waiting to chime in but mike delgadio might be listening in and he may have an idea too are you listening mike i am i am hey and talking about i mean the the interface that i 
that I uh, am always in love with is uh, I've used it for a long time is the audience ID 22. You guys mentioned the ID, the ID four yeah. before. And uh, I, I liked the, uh, the ID 22 because it allowed me to, it allowed me to expand and to grow into this studio. I, you know, I didn't start with this studio. I was able to grow into, able to grow into it. And so far I have not run into any bottlenecks feature wise that, that have allowed me to expand and grow and be able to do more capable things. Not like having the two inputs, certainly for my channel, having the two inputs, two different mic inputs, super clean preamps, really feature rich. I just, I love it. Durable. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. For, well, for, and for doing your videos, having two mic inputs, if you're testing side to side yeah. mics, that's, that's a big yeah. help. Yeah. Yeah. Really important for the, for the videos for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I forgot, you know, I, I think about the 22, but that's, it's I've got a little few more features than, uh, yeah. than the, than the four. Okay. All right. Well, we got another question here from Deirdre Holly. She says, uh -huh. Demos are meant to showcase what the VA can do. Red is right. reproduce. Okay. We did the voice actor. Uh, v, you know, she could have said voice actor. The voice actor, I believe is what, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway. We record demos in a full-blown professional studio. There's no way to reproduce the same sound on different equipment in a different environment. So why do we do demos with all the music background and all the mastering when it seems we should be putting out clean, crisp files to show what we can reproduce in our own studios rather than what we can pay a studio director producer to do? Wow, what a killer question that is. Yeah. You know, that's something that I, I consider all the time um, for commercial demos. You know, there's, you know, I can count on about 50 hands, how many demo producers there are here in LA. And, uh, you know, and, and the funny thing is, is the guys that do a lot of them, you can tell who it is, you know, Oh, that's a so-and-so demo. And that's a so-and-so demo because they do. I don't want to say overproduce, but a demo is not supposed to show off what the demo producer can do. It's supposed to highlight the person's voice. And, uh, but the, you know, it depends on who's hearing the demo and it's like, you know, some agents, if they want to hear a demo or a client go, well, you know, that's just the voice. Where's all the production? Doesn't sound like a commercial. We don't know because eventually who's the ultimate person that makes the decision on who gets hired. It's not the casting director. It's not the you know, an agent. It's the client. And it's really a crapshoot as to who's actually listening to it. Uh, I'd say for uh, an e-learning demo or a narration demo or uh, um, you know, clearly medical narrations and stuff, it should just be your voice. But you're trying to show people what you sound like on commercials in a commercial demo. Your thoughts? Yeah, it's the context. Yes. You know, they, they, the, the, the client wants to hear you in context. They're not interested in knowing what you're, what you sound like in just the vacuum of your studio, because that's not what they're going to be hearing in the end. They're going to be hearing a full production mix. Right. So they just want to hear how you sound in context with, with a real production. So, um, I, you know, and these are norms that have been established in the business, right? These are, you know, maybe that would change someday, but right now these are the norms. This is what, are, what is expected. So we have to give them what they're looking for and what they're expecting, but we also have to be on trend. So we better know what, what they're looking for. And that's why you hire the best, you know, a uh, demo producer you can find that you can find recommended to you because they are on trend. Right. You know, they know what people are looking for, right. which is also why it's really, really risky to self-produce your demo as well. Right. Especially, um, especially if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's so many layers to that. I won't even get into it. But um, if your demo is, if you're starting out just doing phone systems, okay, that's pretty simple. It's just your voice over, you know, that you can cut together and make a phone system demo. It's, it's not a lot of production. But, you know, things that sound like they're on television or on a trailer or a movie trailer or e-learning, things that sound like they have, have a mix going on with music and other things, yeah, that's really uh, going to be tough to pull off yourself. Uh, even if you know how to do it, um, you shouldn't probably do it. Like I was talking to Cliff Zellman uh, for a bit. He was really proud of, an, of a demo he had just finished for someone, and, and he, he was playing it for me. And he reminded me that when he produces a demo, he does an entire 
commercial. Like if he has five spots in a, in a demo, for example, he com- he produces five complete spots, right, beginning to end. And he and I think them- J. Michael. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I think J. Michael does that too. Yeah, if well, I recall, I'm, I'm I'm sure he's learned a thing or two from Cliff. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, it's. Yeah, really. I mean, what Cliff does, he records a whole commercial. He did my commercial demo, which I really love. And uh, he just edited them down so they all fit together and show real good contrast and stuff. And he highlights, you know, the voice uh, actor's voice and not yeah. and not show off his production. His production is so good, you don't notice it because it's showing off you. And that's, you know, that'll be, that's a good ad for Cliff there. That'll be $500, please. Uh, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Cliff's a great guy. He's a friend of ours, and absolutely, you know, it was he was a, it was a good reminder of why some demo producers take time. It takes them a while to put something put something together because of because of his approach, right? Um, but it, it, it was, the results speak for themselves. They sound like real commercials because they basically are right. Exactly. Well, if you've got a question for us, uh, you know, you can always write to us at the guys at V O B S dot TV. And, uh, we'll get your question on like those fine viewers have done this evening. By the way, this is not my living room. Um, (laughs) although I wish it was, you know, we asked you guys to show us your booths. And so far we've only gotten two and we've shown those, although it was fun being in Jack DeGolia's closet last week. Um, but, uh, you know, if take a picture of your studio from a perspective of someone looking at it from, you know, walking in the door and, uh, your studio could star here on voiceover body shop. And you can send that to the guys at VOBS.TV. Good timing there. All righty. Well, Mike Delgadio is standing by incredibly patiently and we're going to start to talk to him in just a minute or two, so stay right where you are. We'll be right back on Voice Over Body Shop. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Source Elements is proud to announce that ISDN is not dead. It will live on. Not in a bridge, but real ISDN and, and VISDN lets any customer use their ISDN codec, their Telos Zephyr primarily, but whatever they've got, as, as just with an internet connection. Um, full access to the existing ISDN network and continued access in the future past the dreaded 2020 supposed period when AT&T and others will be ending their ISDN services. VISDN is more flexible and it's more f- affordable than most traditional ISDN services, especially now. Uh, Competitive outbound dialing rates and free in-network calling means no usage charges between VISDN customers now and for all time. So tell your friends, get direct ISDN, even if the local telco says it's not available. Travel with ISDN and don't rely on bridging. VISDN provides the lowest latency and with two internet connections, the most robust internet-based ISDN access. This is from Source Elements, and it's backed by their excellent tech support. You really get the best of both worlds with VISDN. And I can tell you, we had it up and running at the booth in VO Atlanta and the recording studio. We tested it, and even in that case, we were using Wi-Fi. It still worked beautifully. So it's an amazing piece of technology. 
Well, we're going to be coming right back here with Mike Delgadio right after this quick little break. Business and good old-fashioned acting. I really like your bracelet. It's awesome. Hey, Paul, where did you get that watch? Um, that's really cool. And a hamburger with no cheese, please. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on voiceoverbodyshop.com. And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop, and time to introduce our guest and maybe show you a little bit of his work. Mike Delgadio is a non-union voice actor out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In addition to radio and TV commercial work, you may have heard him narrate the New York Times Weekly on Audible, or as part of the regular troupe on the No Sleep Podcast, a popular podcast that dramatizes horror stories. He also hosts the YouTube channel called Booth Junkie, in which he helps people set up their home studio so they can start to perform behind the microphone. Let's take a look at some of his stuff. The Yeti is recording. The Yeti is recording. The Blue Snowball is recording. The Blue Snowball is recording. Camera one is recording. Camera two is recording. Let's synchronize everything. Wreck. Wreck, wreck. We're recording. There are three different kinds of pop filters that you can buy, and we'll look at some DIY type thingies that I've seen people do, and we're going to see their effectiveness. The first one is sorry for the rumbles. There's going to be rumbles as I as I handle the microphone here. The first one is oops. There's going to be a, a nylon, inexpensive pop filter that is fabric. And I also have connected to the mic stand. We have a metal mesh pop filter. Two different techniques, both in this pop filter format. And then thirdly, here it is. We also have the foam um, squishy sock wind thing that goes on there. Uh, three different, so three different approaches to keeping your breath from hitting the diaphragm. Ah, it's good to be in the booth. Good to be in the booth. We have a new microphone in here, one that I've never used before. This one is been uh, has been loaned to me by a fellow booth junkie, Mikey. Mike, my man, Mike loaned me his Blue Yeti Pro. Wow. That's great stuff. Let's welcome to our show the booth junkie, Mike Delgadio. Mike. What's happening, guys? Are you so glad to be here? Are so you you're, are you you're on mic, aren't you? Oh, that's good. I am. I am. Well, uh it's it's great to have you on. I, you know, I've been watching your videos. It's 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 great stuff. It's like like our show, which were like over three hundred and five episodes. You've done quite a few too. Uh that's really great. Uh yeah, I don't know what my count is. I've done done quite a few for sure. For yeah. Sure. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, I gave you a, you know, a little background on it, but uh, tell you how you know where you're from and how you got into voiceover and the type of work you do. Sure. Uh, let's see. I have been. To, I'm new. I'm much newer to uh, to voiceover voice acting than you guys are. I've been doing it for seven years. Seven years. I caught the bug. I sort of recaught the bug much later in life. I thought. I thought I was going to be in broadcasting. I really wanted to be like a radio DJ when I was a kid. And then I went and sat in on a radio DJ spot, you know, a, a, a session at like a small AM radio station in Baltimore. And I was like, this is not for me. This doesn't look like nearly as much fun as I thought it was going <laughs> to be. It's a lot of long, lonely hours. I'll tell you. Long, lonely hours for no pay and no job security. And he's like, oh yeah, my, my stations have changed format and I've been fired five times. Like, well, that's not going to work. That's not going to work for me. And so I sort of walked away from, walked away from that for a long time, a long time. And then I moved to Pittsburgh and rediscovered a love for it. I, I, I took a class just uh, on a whim. I took a class and got in front of the microphone and just positively fell in love with it and went gung ho, absolutely gung ho from knowing really not anything uh, to studying, I bought my first microphone and I just studied, 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 practice, 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 practice every single day. And it, it, it luckily it turned out uh, uh, through a series of serendipitous events, it worked out that people would start to give me money 
to talk into a microphone, which feels a lot like stealing sometimes because it's it's I, I enjoy it so much. Yeah. Uh, and so it's what I've been doing now for seven years. Cool. What type of yeah. what type of work do you specialize in? <laughs> I, I often just say uh, whatever words you want to put in my mouth, I'll say them <laughs> to the very best of my ability. <laughs> uh, I tend to I tend to gravitate towards um, uh, medium form narration i've done a few audiobooks they're not my they're not as i've said this before it's not my favorite thing to do it's a little bit of a marathon i like the the medium sprints i like to do um, medium form i love to do explainer videos w after i left the idea of going into broadcasting i went into like corporate training for a long time and i really i really really super enjoyed corporate training believe it or not getting, getting up in front of a group and teaching people a new skill one that maybe they need to have or they really want to have and just being up in front of a group it people seem to like the way i like the way i teach and so i really i really enjoyed i really enjoyed the, the corporate training of it so things like explainers um Corporate explainers, I love doing them, especially on technical subjects. I love doing those because it's it's stuff that I kind of know uh, from past jobs and past lives. It, it's stuff that I really I like to gravitate towards too. Love reading the news for the New York Times. Love doing that. And uh, you know, I'm on I'm on some um, I'm on a couple of different podcasts. I'm on the No Sleep podcast. I'm on a new one called Congeria uh, that I really have enjoyed doing, where it's uh, where I get to act. I get to act. Uh, so I get to I get but. You ask me to say it and I'll say it. I don't care what it is. <laughs> and that's the attitude you got to have. You know, yeah, it's like, you know, sure. And, and sure. as long as the check clears, you've had a great day. You know uh, it. Yeah. You know it. So, yeah, I, so you've been doing this for seven years. Mm -hmm. How did you start doing these videos? What motivated that? And, and how did that get rolling? Sure. Let's see. It started. It started when I was in the market for my whisper room. And I wanted to know before I, you know, I've, like most people now, I want to research how these things work. And I want, before I'm going to spend a lot of money, I want to know about, know about things. And I was trying to decide between a whisper room and a couple of the other different voice booths that are out there. And in this room where I am, my ceiling is very, is low. And I wanted to make sure that I could put this booth in my room. And I was looking for, well, how does it go together? How do I put the, the ceiling on this thing? And I couldn't find it anywhere. So I took the plunge. I said, can you, you know, when I went and bought this, because I, I bought it secondhand, I like buying things secondhand. So I, I, I had the measure and I said, yes, it'll fit, but I have two inches of clearance. And so I bought it on a, on a risk. And when I, and so I made my first video I was like, well, I'm going to try and put this thing together. Let's see how it goes. And that was my very first video was, was assembling, was assembling this whisper room. And it re, it re sparked that, that corporate trainer part of it, you know, teaching people. The thing that I get super jazzed about, super, super jazzed about is teaching is helping people get over that initial learning curve, uh, go, going from noob to noob who knows what they don't know, I, I suppose is, <laughs> is, is, what it, is what it is. I don't know what I don't know too. I know that I don't know stuff. I like to help people get up that, that initial learning curve. Yeah. Once you're in it, you can go be in it. But I, I love to teach, uh, I love to teach new, new subjects to, to people really, um, novices and I love watching that light bulb go off. I really, really love doing that. And so making that first video um sort of reinvigorate as like, I should make more of these. I really should make more of these. And it and it just sort of has snowballed. And now I'm really addicted to it. I really love making them. Yeah. Well it's clear that you're having a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. Uh, where it. how do you set up the camera to do this? It looks like you you keep it stationary using an iPhone, using a good camera. What are you using? Let's see. Right now, so in, I'm in my whisper room, but I have in my videos, I have a, a, a Sony mirrorless A5000, like the budget, the budget um, mirrorless interchangeable lens camera. Mm -hmm. Right now, this is a, a, just a Logitech webcam, but it's on the outside of the glass of my whisper room. So uh, that, that um, the camera's on the outside, so it doesn't hear, it doesn't hear anything. And luckily the whisper room has a window. So I just shoot, I just shoot to the window and I've got a couple of led lights. All it's all like Velcro <laughs> to the outside of the, outside Man, of the I got to tell you, that's, that's pretty brilliant because I was thinking about, that's gotta be a pretty big booth. 
in order to get you know that perspective no, 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 and no, no. you just put the cameras on the other side of the glass like duh as <laughs> long as you eliminate the uh, do you have the cameras like completely flushed against the glass so you don't get any uh yeah. reflections yep yep i and so i i built and so my com my computer screen is right on the outside of the glass too i measured the glass and i went and found the exact right monitor that would fit very edge to edge of the, on the glass here. Uh, and so that's on the outside because the monitor, the first monitor I had was hot. It was an LCD monitor, blasting heat. So this booth, I mean, the monitor was right here and it was like 110 degrees. It was killing me. I'm like, <laughs> you sweat in these booths. Don't look at me, I'm sweating out. You sweat in these booths. So as soon as I got everything on the outside of the glass, uh, it was, it really works. And so now everything I built a, um, uh, I, I bought, uh, one of those, uh, iron pipes with a vase amount and so i just made it just perfect so it goes right up against the glass and the camera is mounted right at the top of it it's all like this one crazy contraption that i just built out of spare parts i got from awesome it. yeah sounds familiar to, <laughs> to what we do around here <laughs> yeah man it's clued you together somehow and <laughs> You know what? I that's the that's exactly the way I've I've done it. I've because I've I you know I don't I'm figuring this out as I go and I'll think this is perfect. What I got going, this is perfect. And then like six months later, I'm like you know what would have been better if I had just done this other thing. So I never I never permanently modify anything. If I can attach it with Velcro, if I can just scooch things together, if I can do it with PVC that's just sort of squeezed together, I'll always, I'll always do it that way. I'll always yeah. do it that way. I never want to make permanent modifications yeah. to any of this stuff. PVC. Because I'm always going to make it better. Yeah. PVC is the greatest thing ever. You know, oh, and you can do all best. sorts of cool things with it. You know, you, sometimes you'll, you'll tell a client, are you good with PVC? And they'll sort of look <laughs> at you cross-eyed. No, no, no. It's really simple. You just need this blue glue. <laughs> you know, it makes you yeah. really wild and, you know, so, but yeah. anyway. <laughs> Great for prototyping. Great absolutely. For prototyping. Absolutely. So what is this passion you have for gear? What, can we classify you as a geek? I don't see a geek. I see someone who has a passion for gear. I, you know, I like your, I'm, I'm always in the pursuit of, of, of improvement, of pr improving the sound and, and I want to try everything. I mean, I just want to try it all because, and to share it with people, uh, cause we'd all don't get a chance to use and listen to all these different microphones. And that was part of the genesis for me was to, well, I've got this thing. I'll share it with other people. I've got two of these things. I'll try do them side by side and let, let people hear them. And so now it's turned into, I really get jazzed about trying new things. And, and I'm so incredibly grateful to all the people who watch my channel because they send me their precious equipment. And they're like, Mike, would you like to borrow this? I'm like, what <laughs> you're gonna let me borrow your multi hundred dollar thing sometimes multi thousand dollar thing you don't know me and so i'm, I'm incredibly grateful and so yeah now i'm like really a, a junkie look at i'm really a junkie for uh, uh for just trying it out and seeing what might be best for me what how can i improve what can i do better is this gonna help me make more money? Is it going to help me sound better? Is it going to speed my workflow? Any, any of those things I'm always looking to improve. Right. And, and that's usually the most important thing is, is what works best for you, but you've yeah. got to have, you've got to see all the choices and you know, yeah. you know you're presenting and I, that you know, and that helps. They always say, go buy two microphones and return one of them. And I, I can appreciate that. I, I, that's not, it doesn't always feel like the best thing for me. I always feel bad, you know, getting my getting my spit on a microphone and then sending it back to somebody else. So if I can, if I can help other people, you know, learn about these things and, you know, just share it, just share it. I'm always, I'm, I'm into what, it. I'm into what that. do you know about, um, what do you know about your viewers? Like what are the kind of people, cause we know we have a really target audience. They're pretty much all voice actors. Yeah. They're getting into voiceover or they're very busy voice actors that just, you know, like hanging out with us. What, how, what do you know about the audience? Where do people come from that watch your show? Yeah. So my audience is actually much broader than I ever thought. And, and I know this, I don't look at analytics or anything like that, but I talk to them. They all, they, they send me Facebook and YouTube messages and tweets and, and emails. And I, so I learn a lot about them. And for me, there's, I have two, maybe three groups of, of people that really gravitate towards uh, what I'm, what I'm doing is people that want to start voice acting and they really, you know, don't know what to do. They like, I'm into this thing. I want to talk. I want to make stories. I want to, I want to make commercials. I want to do, you know, I want to start talking in front of a microphone and I, I don't know, they want to become voice artists, voice actors, voiceover folks. And they, uh, and they don't know what to do. 
That's one group. And the other group that, that really, um, they talk to me a lot are the, the like Twitch folks, the streamers and the gamers that are, that are trying to make their sound more competitive or, uh, you know, better so they can attract more viewers for whatever it is that they're streaming. And, you know, a lot of them are like, well, I know that there's the blue Yeti and I, and I put that on my desk and all of a sudden I'm good because I saw some other streamer do it. And I try and help people understand, well, it's about the mic placement, the mic style, the, you know, the, the patterns, all of these things can ha can have a play. And so they, they tend, even though I'm not really a streamer, they, they tend to come and they come and talk to me. So tons and tons of tons of gamers. And then, you know, the third group is a uh, podcasters. A lot of people know me from the podcasts that I'm on. And so they want to, and they want to improve, start a podcast, improve their podcast, uh, improve the sound of their podcast. And so they, they come over and they check my stuff out. Yeah. So uh, do any of the manufacturers know you're out there? Are they sending you stuff to test out and, and they are and, and yeah, rave about? starting to, yeah. In, in the very beginning, it was lots of the, uh, um, the Chinese importers, the, the, the people with, you know, and no slight to them. It's just the, you know, they're, they're all from China. They're sending me stuff from like AliExpress. They're, they were sending me a bunch of inexpensive things, but now, uh, since I've, I've, I guess my audience is bigger. So I've been able to, to attract their attention. So now uh, several companies have sent me things most recently. Um, I, uh, 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 one of my viewers, sent me a Lewitt microphone, which I didn't really know much about uh, the Lewitt 550 discontinued mic, but I did a, I did a video about it because I was interested in it. And the folks from Lewitt uh, just reached out to me and they said, like, would you like to test some more mics on loan, on loan? But they sent me one, essentially one of everything. So all of a sudden I've got this whole big pile of <laughs> microphones right, right over there. And I'm like, yeah, I want to try them all. Um, other companies, this this microphone, uh, a company out in LA that is a, a, a vendor, sent me sent me this microphone uh, to test. And I, you know, I try, I disclose that uh, during during the videos, and and I also disclose if uh, if it's just somebody who's lo loaning it to me, or and if it's a a civilian who's loaning it to me as opposed to the, the business person. But yeah, some of the companies are starting to notice. Well, that's good. That's a Sankin. What is that, Mike? This is the Sankin CU fifty one microphone uh sent to me by a company called plus 24 that's a vendor out in uh, california hmm. i'll tell you it can get a little overwhelming right once they when they send you a bunch of stuff and you know they, some of them can be very patient i have to admit i've been sitting on a review for a product now for oh man probably four months because it's taken me so long to to, to do the actual production yeah. and i feel so guilty yeah, that it's yeah, taking yeah, me yeah. this long to do it, but when they send you all that stuff, it puts some pressure on you to, to it, it, it shoot does, video yeah. of it all. And I, I try and set expectations, and it's not going to be less than a not less than a month. I might have it longer. There's some there's some things that I got late last year that I I, I haven't made videos because I, I try and prioritize the the civilians that have sent me their stuff. I try and do that faster, so the companies they're they're going to wait. They're going to wait unless they're, you know, unless they're like, we, we're trying to do it for a deadline or something like that. Then I'll, then I'll, I'll try and accommodate that. But the companies, the companies will always come before the, or come after the, the, the fans. I don't know if they're fans, but the people who send me things, they'll always come first. Yeah. If you're just joining us, where you been? Uh, but we're talking with Mike Delgadio, uh, the booth junkie. And if you have a question for him, all you have to do is put it in the chat room and Jack Daniel is sitting around somewhere, but looking at the chat room and he is relaying those questions to us. So if you want to ask him something, go in the chat room and do that. Also um, Facebook and the Facebook, Facebook feed Facebook. is you yeah. can, you can make comments on the Facebook page as well, where the show is. And Jack is also monitoring that. So we got you both covered because I understand the show is so popular tonight. Our chat room actually got full. Wow. So if you're wanting to make comments or, or send in questions, do it on the Facebook page. All righty. Cool. Um, what is your favorite piece of gear, Mike, uh, besides the CAD E100S? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite piece of gear? Uh, that's a toughie. Is it a microphone? I, I, my, I love my uh, Sennheiser 416 microphone. I love that microphone, super versatile. I love it. I love my Audient ID 22. We mentioned that earlier. I really like that. It's been super reliable. 
it it never breaks. It's expanded to to everything I've needed it to do from having a talk back and monitors and two headphone feeds and I can I can do everything. I can I can do a, a session where I'm the control person and I have a talent in the booth or I can do it all myself. I really like that. Um, and people who know my channel know I'm a big, huge proponent of the Zoom uh, H5 uh, portable device because it's super flexible, especially for people who are new and they're trying to set up a booth and their they, they got to move away from their computer for the noise. The Zoom H5, because it can be an interface, because it can be a, um, a portable recorder, uh, I'm, I'm a big, big proponent of that. It's been really invaluable for my channel. So, I mean, Who's my favorite kid? I, I don't know. I got, I got <laughs> how many you have? Of <laughs> I got two, two kids. Oh, They're okay. both my favorites. Yeah, you you can you can play them off each other. It works really well. I've done that too. Um, yeah. But what what is what is this thing you have for the the Cat E100s? I mean, we were talking about it earlier. I mean, I have one, and and it's a great mic. Um, you know, some people have other things to say about it, but you seem to really like it. It's, I, you, I do. You compare I, it to I, everything else, right? Yeah, I do. I, I tend to use it a lot. And, you know, like many people, I, I had to have mine fixed. But once I had it fixed, the way it sounded, I think, is on par with even the most expensive microphones that I've tested. I, I really, I think for voiceover, I think the pattern uh, being the super cardioid, it, it's forgiving of the, of the, um, the less than optimal booth. So I think it's one that you can grow with. I think it's got a really robust sound. I think it's very flattering to the voice. I think it's got a great low end. It it um, it, it's not at all uh, uh, hissy, sibilant, or anything like that. C a common thing that I people email about email me about their own mics. They say, "Man, it's so, the the S's sound like static. What can I do?" Uh, whereas the the E one hundred S for me, it's it's always been just it's it's great. It just sounds wonderful. Sounds very natural. It's not, it's, uh, I don't know. I just, I just love it so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, what monitors do you have in your studio when you're outside the booth? Um, uh, right now it's the basic, uh, JBL LSR 305s, but I also have a pair of, um, they're discontinued JBL eight inch. Oh, <sighs> Uh, the mod, uh, the model number just flew out of my head, but they were these ones that came with, um, came with a microphone. So it would do all the EQing for you. So you just wow. put the microphone in the li listening position and you, you know, played a bunch of sounds and it would do the EQing for you. And then it'll come to me at some point, hopefully <laughs> now it's, blown out. it's an LSR like 2635. You know what? Know Go look I mean. during the uh, break yeah, and you can tell us later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't I'll rack think. your brain. We we need you for another t a few minutes here. Don't so. worry out. <laughs> George? I've already forgotten what we were talking about. Let's go. Genelec actually, uh, Genelec came out with their own system of that, amazingly, years later after JBL did. And I just uh, saw it demoed at uh, friend studio Byron oh, Wagner's. Oh, but yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. I can't wait to see it's that. It's pretty uh, fancy stuff, but boy, it's a whole different price category way more no expensive doubt. no doubt no doubt you know but i i think you mentioned this last week george buying secondhand for me has been the the absolute the absolute key to a lot of this stuff and i you know i'm just a small time voice actor i i'm my budget's as small as anybody else's so uh learning how to have craigslist alerts come to me for all those things that's i sometimes i wait years for for things to come by and uh hopefully I'll have the money for it. So buying secondhand, if you're uh, if you're willing to take the risk, you can really save a lot of money. That's how I've been doing it. George, you got a question. Oh yeah. Well, we've talked a lot about hardware, but software. Yeah. Um, it's pretty well known by now that if anybody knows you that you love one particular digital audio workstation software. Yeah. That's yeah. Reaper. Reaper. Um, Reaper. How long? How far along was it before you discovered Reaper? When did you discover it? Uh, I, I discovered it reasonably early. Thank goodness. I started with audacity and the hard part for me for audacity was the destructive editing, especially for somebody who like knew Photoshop and was like, I can non-destructively edit a photo. Why can't I non-destructively edit my audio? So audacity, some of the things that it would do was, was hard. Uh, the very first interface I bought, I bought secondhand was a personas one and it came with a copy of, um, studio one, I think. Right. 
And it was okay. It was okay, but it was really for music. It was, you know, really, really optimized for making music. And I have no interest in making music. I can't, I don't, it wasn't my thing. And so, uh, and then I heard, you know, people talking about Reaper and, and it's, and it's really, really customizable. And I'm a, I'm a geek. I was a, a former life. I was a programmer. So technical things didn't, scare me. And I, I, I liked that I could have, you know, I could program it in Python if I wanted to. And, and anyway, I don't really do that, but I, but being able to do anything I want in the DAW and reconfigure it however I want so that I can totally optimize it for exactly the way that I want to work and create the macros that I need to, that match exactly the, the workflow that I have in my head and that I can improve those workflows. Uh, Reaper has been an absolute absolute game changer for me because I, I, my Reaper might not look like anybody else's, but it's, it's mine. And it's totally exactly tailored to exactly the way that I want to work until I think of the next thing. And then whatever <laughs> the next thing is, it will work for that too. And that's, what's really been amazing for it is I haven't, it, it might not out of the box. It might not have every bell and whistle. It's got darn near every bell and whistle, but I, you know, I think, you know, pro tools and they, they probably, and uh, Nuendo, they probably have, have more things. They definitely have more things, but so far I have not been stymied in any way to, to bend Reaper to my will rather than me bending to Reaper's will. I bend it to my will. And so I'm a fan, total fan. And for the price for the, for the most of the world, 60 bucks, come on, 60 bucks. How can you go wrong? Yeah, really? Yeah. So yeah. If you love if- it. Yeah. If you're joining us again, we're talking with Mike Delgadio, the booth junkie. Maybe you're familiar with some of his uh, YouTube videos about uh, home studio equipment. It's really cool. Again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room and we'll uh, we'll throw it to him. I got one more question before we take the break, though. Sure. With all the video that you do, has it led to any professional voice work? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, people... Part of the, the the benefit that I have I've learned from from working on YouTube is it's it's as much my marketing as anything. I before I started doing this channel, I was a voice for another channel um, that that has since gone on hiatus, but that generated a lot of work for me. And then starting to make this make these videos, it has generated a lot of work for me because I. I get to demonstrate that I know what I'm doing. I don't have to, I don't have to say, Hey, you should hire me because I know what I'm doing. Hey, you should hire me because I've got a good voice for you. I get to demonstrate that one, how my studio sounds exactly in the raw state, how my studio sounds. I get to demonstrate that I, I know what I know and I sound how I sound. And you can see sort of how I am naturally. And, and hopefully it's, uh, a voice that you like for your project. I know I'm not right for every project, but I've, I've gotten a, a, a lot of work. A lot of work gets generated just because, uh, because I get to demonstrate. And I think that's, I think that's, I don't know a lot about marketing, but for me, that's been a, a really good marketing aspect for my business is I just make something that I really like and I demonstrate my proficiency, my expertise at it. And if that resonates with you, then possibly you're hire me. I, I don't, I don't cold call. I don't, I don't uh, send emails out about my, my, myself or anything like that. I just, I try and make the things that I want to make and hopefully it resonates with some people and maybe they'll want to hire me. I hope. Well, that, that's, that's good to hear. Cause you know, yeah. you put, you put a lot of time and effort into it and you want to see, you know, I yeah, mean, sure. you enjoy doing it, but you want to see uh, some results from that as well. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, again, uh, uh, put it in the chat room. If you've got a question for Mike Delgadio, the, uh, the booth junkie, I have to ask you why you came up with that name, but, uh, we'll talk to him in just a minute right after this. Skittles taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The national zoo, <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. 
Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stain. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. It's actually Paul that said that. All righty. Hey, we're back here to talk about one of our favorite people, somebody who has supported this show you know, George, it's almost been seven years. It'll be seven years in March. Seven years. You know, but Harlan Hogan is a great guy. But not only is he a great guy and a great voice talent, he also has a great website, voiceoveressentials.com. And if you need something for your home studio, he's got it. Everything. Everything that Mike Delgadio is talking about tonight, if you need it, if you go to voiceoveressentials.com, you can probably find it there. Well, maybe not some of those higher end mics, depending on how you buy some of those, but all the other things he has, plus his signature series products like the VO1A voice optimized for voiceover microphone. Not a lot of microphones made for voiceover. As we were talking about, all this stuff is made for making music, but not the Harland Hogan VO1A, which is a great mic. And it's our, it's our, our desk mic here at uh, voiceover body shop. Also, he has those great headphones, the uh, the optimized for voiceover headphones. They've got memory foam, leather ca- uh, pads on them. They're very isolating. They're really comfortable. But most importantly, they have very, very flat response. You're hearing exactly what you record. And that's why you have something like that. If you need good headphones, those are good. And they're not plastic either. They're actually made of metal. So they're the best ones you can find for, for uh, when you're doing voiceover work. But how do you get there? It's real easy. All you have to do is go to the bottom of our page that you're watching the show on now, if you're not on Facebook, but then that might make you want to go to our page. Go down there to the bottom and you'll see all our sponsors. There's a picture there of Harlan Hogan talking into his Portabooth Pro, another great product that you can find there. You click on that, it'll take you right to uh, voiceoveressentials.com, and then you can just peruse all the stuff. And if it's not something you see in his immediate catalog of uh, specialty products, you can probably find it and uh, find get it on Amazon through voiceoveressentials.com. So go over there right now, buy all of his stuff, and pay every last cent you have to Harlan Hogan because it will be worth it in the long run. Thanks for being a sponsor, Harlan. We just love having you here on VoiceOver Body Shop. We'll be right back with your questions for Mike Delgadio right after this. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Business. At good old-fashioned acting. Hey, Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. And we are back. We're talking with Mike Delgadio, the booth junkie. And it's great talking to you, Mike. You, it's it, be, One of the things is, is you sound like one of us and because you've been looking at all this equipment. But... A lot of our listeners and viewers have questions for you. Leading off with Paul Stefano, who has a multiplicative amount of questions here. Uh, he, says, he says, Mike, what is the one piece of equipment that really surprised you? The Behringer uh, Euphoria UHC 404 interface. I expected that to be a dog and it was great it was great for an interface i think at the time it was like 70 dollars. i was shocked and so that 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 interface right off the bat was uh was one that was really surprising surprisingly good the preamps were nice and quiet it sounded sounded great it was effortless to hook up worked great i use a mac it worked great with my mac i was really surprised that one was uh that was a very pleasant surprise because i didn't expect to, to like that one at all yeah well i mean a little secret well, the, the mics we use on our show in the studio are running through a Behringer mixer. It's actually an XR12R, the X Air series. It's a 
digitally controlled mixer. But um, one of the reasons why even some of the less expensive Behringer stuff sounds so great is because they uh, acquired Midas, which makes, you know, made and makes really big high end consoles. And they trickled down the preamps and some other technologies into these really inexpensive stuff. Wow. And I think that's one of them, that, that piece you're talking about. And yeah, Behringer ain't the Behringer we used to think of. They've, they've come a long way. <laughs> uh, what's your opinion, also from Paul, uh, what's your opinion on processing for auditions? Do you put a little special sauce on your audition files? No, uh, but I don't send them raw either. Um, so I don't know if that's special sauce or not, but I, I try and for auditions, I try and give them the exact same uh, chain that I, that I give them for the final. And it's very, very light. It's just super light. I, um, I use a noise gate to manage the breath. And if I rustle in the booth, a little tiny bit of gate to just manage the, the in between. Luckily I've got a really low noise floor in the booth. So I don't have to worry about, you know, gating out hiss or anything like that. I, uh, so I use a gate, I use, um, a little bit of, a little bit of EQ just to make sure in case there's, I, there's traffic right out there, out there. So I, I will roll off a little low end. So it's not raw, uh, but it, it sounds, it sounds raw, but I don't like, I don't like, uh, you know, hype it up or anything like that. I don't like really compress it or anything like that. I don't normalize it. I just, I just, send it with my my standard chain exactly what you're going to get well the sound you have in that booth sounds like you having a conversation with us your your mic yeah. technique is on yeah, the booth is acoustically right and that's all that really matters for uh that kind of stuff um yeah, paul has another question he says <laughs> and i think we'd all ask this uh living in pittsburgh do you think you're missing out on large market jobs yeah definitely definitely yeah yeah i'm sure i am uh uh, most of the, you know, I have an agent here in town and most of the gigs there, you know, they're regional discovery channeling coming to Pittsburgh to look at, you know, to look at talent for anything like that. So yeah, I, I sure am. It, maybe if I had representation in LA or, or New York, I, I would, um, I would get a chance at more of those gigs, but yeah. So I'd say out in this market, um, but that doesn't mean I'm not, you know, I'm not earning. I'm just, you know, the, it's a little bit of a dis different hustle. It's a little bit of a different grind. I'm, and, you know, I like to think that my ocean is, is a little bluer here. Uh, the competition isn't nearly so stiff for when I'm in auditions. Um, and I'm happy doing, I'm happy doing radio and TV commercials in the, in the regional markets too. So um, will that change? Yeah, maybe, maybe as I, as I want to grow and expand my business and to, and to plunge into the, you know, the, the redder oceans in, in the, in the major markets. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm. There's his audio. There we go. There we go. He's back. There we Mike, go. I fat fingered a button and I uh, need to apologize. Uh, thought I was, thought was I was you. saying something I wasn't supposed to be saying. This is, this is the <laughs> issue with remote. <laughs> pitching the show there's a bit of a latency and a lag yeah. when i hit buttons so sorry about that man. yeah no what were you saying no worries uh no so i you know i probably am missing out on some uh you know i don't get i don't get budweiser coming to offer me offer me gigs. so yeah I'm, I'm sure i'm missing out on some of those okay and his last question he had a few there paul but paul's a good paul's interview. yeah uh <laughs> do you have plans to make booth junkie a paid channel if not what are the plans for the future a pay channel uh, that you'd have to pay to watch? No. No. Okay. No, I, I, I don't think so. Um, where I take it from here, I haven't really, you know, I, I, I just want to expose. I just want, I don't know, grow the audience. But no, I, it, it does fine. It, it does exactly what I want it to do right now. So I don't, I don't feel compelled to, uh, you know, try and get people to subscribe or to, you know, to tie themselves to me if they want to make a donation, that's fine. But, uh, no, right now I, I plan to keep it just, I, I'm a firm believer in just giving it away. I'm just going to get, I'm going to keep giving it away. If they need to talk to me individually, I'm happy to do like a, 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 a the limited coaching that I do. Um, you know, I, People, do, I, people ask me to do the same thing, I guess, that you, that they ask you to do with your specimen cup. And it's not really my, uh, it's not my strong suit, you know, trying to diagnose what people. And so I'll leave that for you, Dan. I'll leave that stuff for you. <laughs> 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 leave that. Uh, but no, I don't, I don't really have plans to like close it or, or, or any, or anything like that. Mike, you're not selling anything. That's, I mean, that's when I watched Booth Punk, I kept watching the videos and going, wait a minute. And when is he going to sell something? 
Yeah, really. When is he when is he going to promote his business or show show his you know affiliate links and blah blah? blah. You're truly not selling anything. You're just no. out there to share this knowledge. It's just, the, the, it's really awesome. Yeah. The one place, the one place that I, I confess to making, you know, a, a, a few extra pennies is, uh, you know, the first link in the description. If there's, if the mic I'm talking about or piece of equipment, if, it, if it's available on Amazon, I'll send you over there. And if I, you know, if it makes a little bit, but no, I just, I'm just giving it, giving it away. That's awesome. Um, right. This one's from Jeff Plunk. And he says, what is your, Hardware or vocal chain. So what are you using in your day-to-day -day recordings for your voice actors, your mic interface and such? Yeah. So I do, uh, for my YouTube videos, I try and keep it aside from whatever microphone I'm testing. I try and keep it prosumer. So it goes from here. I have a Rolls headphone amp here in the booth just so I can hear myself. It goes over to my audience ID 22 and into Reaper. Really straightforward. Um, and that for that really does serve most of my purposes. Um, I do have George, as you know, I bought an Avalon preamp, and so right now you're hearing me through the Avalon preamp. So for my my production work, I have the the vacuum tube preamp because I like the way it sounds, and that's just chained into the into the ID twenty two. And I've got a couple of other preamps that I'm experimenting with that I've uh, that people have recommended to me. People that I trust have recommended for me to to get vintage stuff. Um, I have a, a CLM dynamics, uh, DB four, 400. It's a four channel preamp of which I use one whole channel of it. Uh, so I ha I have one of those that I, I recently got. Uh, so I'm, I'm experimenting with experimenting with that. And I, and I have a DBX 286 S, uh, that I use for my, on my channel from time to time, because I, I, I really like that from a prosumer perspective. It's really affordable. It's a, it's a good alternative to something like a cloud lifter or a fed head. So, you know, in, 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 in that realm, but generally whatever mic and the ID 20, uh, ID 22 it, it has been, has been perfect for really anything, anything that I needed. It's been perfect. Let me ask you this. Are you plugging your Avalon output into the, mic or line input of the ID 22 or are you plugging into the return jack? I hope this isn't ID a trick 22. question because it, it goes into the return. Hopefully nice. that's not a trick question. It goes into the return. Ding, ding, ding. You win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> we'll send you a voiceover body shop, uh, uh, you know, a charger uh, block. <laughs> you can never have enough of those. Uh, the one and only Tremaine Kendrick Mosley, who we saw in uh, VO Atlanta this weekend. Great to see you there, Trey. Uh, Mike, do you use different types of mics depending on the type of session? Or at least what's your choices on that? Yeah, so uh, I do tend to go between three. Um, it, generally, my repertoire of microphones has expanded. So I, you know, sometimes be like, oh, I'm going to try this other thing. I, I, I will confess that... Um, my New York times reading is a lot of times where my mic experiments go, uh, because it ends up on audible and they, and they process it. So I, 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 I can kind of get away with it there. And so a lot of the microphones that I test, if you listen to the New York times on Saturday morning and if I'm articles, you might be hearing one of the, one of the recent mics, but generally speaking, um, I have the MKH 416 microphone that I really, uh, I, I like to use. And that's one of my favorites because it's super easy from a copy perspective. So it's, it can be out of my way. It sounds fantastic. It's quiet as a mouse. I get no street noise. My furnace doesn't, doesn't interfere with it. That's great. Um, if I want to sound uh, for radio commercials, for a lot of radio imaging, even though that's like a radio imaging mic, I use my, uh, my TLM 103. Um, I use that one a lot because I love the proximity effect. I can get right up on that mic and I can sound big and huge and authoritative. Um, and I use the E100S uh, for quite a bit for narration, for acting where I need to sound like a regular person. I don't want to boom or I don't want to, I, I don't, I don't want to um, sound extra bassy or, or anything like that. I, I will often put the E100S uh, in, in the, in the mount too. Those are the three. I, those are my three go-tos. And if that, for whatever reason, doesn't do it, then I go to any of the uh, wide variety of other mics that I've acquired over the past couple of years. All right. We got time for like one, maybe two more questions. And uh, Deidre Holly asks, so Mike, I've talked to folks that have one monitor and some that have two. So do I buy a pair of JBLs or a single? And why? Well, that's an excellent question. I think for voiceover, 
if you're only going to be doing voiceover, I think you can get away with one. That's, I don't have any reason why you wouldn't be able to. I record everything in mono. I don't have a, I don't know that there's a reason uh, for there to be two. But if you are going to be over a stereo music bed or anything like that, I have two because I also listen to music over, over my monitors. Uh, and so I, I think two is more natural for me, but I think you can get away with one. If you just want to buy one, I, I don't see any reason why you couldn't, if you're just doing it to monitor your voice. All righty. That's, that's what I say. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to squeeze in one last one. Yeah. With, yeah. Without the potato chips though. Without the potato <laughs> chips. Sorry. I, I needed to eat before the show. So rude of me. <laughs> Um, um, this one's from Maxine Dunn. She says, thanks for the amazing interview, but this is, you know, about your production. How many hours a week do you spend working on these videos versus doing, you know, your voice work? How is this? It must be a significant chunk out of your time, out of your day. The videos take a chunk of time. Um, I, I will do them on a night that I'm not booked. So if I'm not, uh, I, I generally try and do them after the traffic side has, has subsided. Uh, so I record them a lot at night and then I'll edit them. Usually I, I, I go back and rewatch them to make sure that there isn't anything horrifying in there. And then I'll edit them the next day. So we, each video, probably 15 minute video video might take me three or four hours to do maybe five hours, depending. Um, so I just squeeze it in. I squeeze it in. Sometimes I'm really super productive on videos and sometimes they might go a, a couple of weeks. I'm probably, YouTube probably hates me for that because they like consistency. I'm not as consistent as I should be, uh, but I just squeeze it in. I squeeze it in whenever I can. Whenever I All righty. Well, Mike, it is, I've been looking forward to having you on. This was really great. It's, it's great to see how you do your stuff and it was a lot of fun having you. We appreciate an it. Honor, honor and a privilege. I'm so grateful to be invited onto the channel. It's been a ton of fun. Thank you so much. All right. Come out and visit us out here in California on a Monday night. We'd love to have you in love here. All righty. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. All righty. Thanks, Mike. All right. We'll Thanks be right back to uh, say goodbye right after this. Don't go anywhere quite yet. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we're back. Got to send out special wishes again to our great friend, Pat Sweeney. Give him a pat on the back. Uh, he's going through some, uh, some treatment right now and everybody's praying for him and sending him lots of love. And, uh, we wish him all the best up there in Toronto. So good luck there, Pat. Um, who's on next on our show next week. Oh. You want to be here. We've got Carlos Alizraki. This guy's been on everything we thought you thought roger rose was on everything this guy's been on everything too and uh, you know i know there'll be a crowd of people here for that uh so make sure you're here for that march 19th dan o'day will be here to talk about his uh his course on uh audiobooks march 26th the lovely and extremely talented and uh, very bright dr rena or uh, dr rena gupta who is a <laughs> she is a rhino Auto rhino. What, uh, what, she's an, she's an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Uh, <laughs> an otorhinolaryngologist. Otorhinolaryngologist from uh, from Osborne Head Neck here in L.A. And uh, we'll be off on April second, and then Tim Friedlander will be out here on uh, April 9th. Who are our donors of the week? Yes, I've been queuing them up here. I've got uh, donations from Tracy H. Reynolds, Andrew Kaufman, Eric Aragoni. Um, Stephanie Sutherland, that's kind of a new name to me. Diana Birdsall, hey, we saw her in the airport. 
I saw um, her on the airplane. Here's one that's on, <laughs> kind of a new one to me. Royal Tartan Holdings. Somebody named Sandy. Thank you. Heather Masters. Jorge Infante. Jorge. Uh, and uh, that's the that seems to be the loop. And then we go back to the prior week where some some folks donate pretty much every week, like Andrew Kaufman and Eric Aragoni. And uh, it's, man, super appreciated of you guys to do that. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, you've got a new podcast, too. It's real geeky. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we do have a new podcast. Uh, it's me and a few other fellows in the business. Um, Darren Robertson, who's in Sydney, Australia. He's a producer and engineer. Andrew Peters, who's kind of the summer, summer of the brainchild behind it. Uh, he's a voice talent in Melbourne area. And then Robert Marshall of Source Elements. The four of us together formed the Pro Audio Suite. And we talk pro audio stuff, but there's also the occasional interview and uh, mixed in there as well. And that's that's purely a podcast. That's no video content whatsoever, a pure podcast. All righty. And, of course, you can access the show logs uh, when the show gets posted on YouTube. Uh, thanks to Jack DeGolia for doing that. We have a podcast. It's on everything, anywhere you can get a podcast. And uh, I know there's a lot of people that access the show that way. Uh, we're on here 6 o'clock Pacific time every Monday night. You want to be here? Where do they write, George? You can join us uh, by emailing the guys at vobs.tv. Let us know you want to be in the audience. And we'd We'll let you in if you have the secret knock. Yeah, and handshake. It's it's a combination. You have to do both. Um, also, show us your booths. Got to see your booths. We want to see the pictures of your studios like we talked at the top of the show. So I don't have to hang out in my virtual living room here with George over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and next week with Carlos Alas Rocky here, it's, it's going to be rocking. So just write to us if you, you think you can be here. Thanking our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Oh, VoiceOver Extra. There you go. Source Elements. VO to go go. VoiceActorWebsites.com and J. Michael Collins demos for providing an uninterrupted live stream and bandwidth. And an uninterrupted line of mimosas. <laughs> uh, my goodness, he had a lot of that stuff lined up at VO Atlanta. Uh, Got to thank a bunch of people. Uh, thanks to Marcy for letting us be out here in the garage. Uh, thanks Ma to Maxine Dunn for letting me sit in the living room and take over part of the house for this. Well, that's always great. Uh, our great producer, Catherine Curran, and for finding us great guests like Mike Dale Gaudio and <laughs> Carl Salas Rocky next week. Uh, Sue Merlino, our amazing floor director, technical director, and Jack DeGolia for the show notes. And, of course, Lee Penny for simply being Lee Penny. And you may have missed Jack Daniel. Oh. Possibly. Oh, there we go. Jack he's, Daniel he's, is doing the uh, the rundown that's for us right. tonight, taking care of all your questions. Yeah. Thanks you don't, to everybody. We don't see it. He's not here tonight. He's he's vir here virtually. I forgot he was there. That's right. Doing a great job. You, Appreciate Jack. it. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, uh, thanks again to Mike Delgadio for a uh, great interview and some really cool insight into his world. And, uh, you know, this isn't an easy business. You got to study, you got to know all the details to make it work. And George and I are here to help you out every week here on VoiceOver Body Shop. So I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. BS. See you next week, guys.